Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Trader Juice. Today we've got with us Gavin Holmes of TradeGuider.com and we're hoping that Gavin's going to share some amazing information with us uh, about trading, his background and all that kind of good stuff. So Gavin, hey, welcome to Trader Juice. Hi Mal, nice to be here and uh, we finally got around to doing this interview. I'm very pleased to be here and I hope to share with your audience today some, uh, some valuable information about how the markets really work. Absolutely, and it's great to have you. So let's um, begin at the beginning. Gavin, where, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, where you grew up, and we'll start from there and work our way through all the fun stuff about trading. Well, I grew up actually in the New Forest National Park um, when I was a child, um, which is near Southampton in, in Hampshire. Um, I started my career as a police officer which with the surname Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, you can quite imagine got a laugh when I went up to court and they asked for Detective Holmes to come and give evidence. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, that's how I started my career. I was, I was determined to be a police officer, but then I was injured on duty um, and decided to retire. And that took me into the jewellery business and I became a, a jeweller and then moved from that into starting my own business. And it's through starting my own business, which was in exhibition stand design, that I met the man that... Uh, finally got me into the world of trading. His name is Tom Williams, and I'll, I'll explain more about him later. But uh, I've had quite a varied career. I've uh, run my own companies now for the last 16 years, and uh, now I'm full-time as um, a fund manager and working with Trade Guider Systems. I'm actually back in the New Forest National Park, having lived in Chicago for uh, 15 years. And my wife, Laura, is an American. I have two lovely children, and uh, we now live in Lymington, which is uh, on the south coast of England, beautiful area. And I don't think it's too far from you, actually, Mark, because I don't think you're, you're um, in Sussex, aren't you? Yeah, we're not, not too far away from me at all. Great. So great stuff. So a very, very background. Um, so when you, when you first met Tom, uh, how, how did you, you know, come about trading as a possible career direction? What, how, how did that conversation take place? It was, it was complete fate. And I, I do believe in fate in life. Um, I, I had a company at the time with my business partner, who's still my business partner, Richard Bednell, which designed uh, exhibition stands, but also had an email uh, system where we could send a, a video in an email. It was quite a very unique piece of technology. And one of Tom's customers contacted us because Tom um, was looking for someone to invest in his business. And, I, and initially, uh, they came to my office, which at the time was in Beckenham in Kent, uh, to do a, a sales presentation to me about something called volume spread analysis. Now, I knew nothing really about the financial markets at all at the time. And um, I have to say, I've written in my book, I've, I've written a book called Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money, and in it, I, I actually say it's the meeting that changed my life, and that is very true. Uh, it completely turned my life around in a much more positive way. And I have to say, I sold my other businesses and focused solely on the volume spread analysis method. And we brought the company from Tom about six months after I'd met him. And the reason we did was I did some due diligence on the methodology called VSA. And it was, ba it was based on the work of a trader you may have heard of called Richard Wyckoff, who was a trader in the 1920s and 30s who analyzed supply and demand in the market. And I, I went to one of my friends who was a City of London trader and I gave him this piece of software that Tom had asked me to look at. And after three days, he came back to me and said, Gavin, you've got a piece of software that is as close to the trading floor as you're going to get. You need to get involved with this business. And um, we brought the company six months later, and I've never looked back. <laughs> and here I am, having lived in Chicago, uh, where we launched the company, because we're an LLC as well as a limited company, um, spent 15 great years in the heart of the financial district, but then finally had the opportunity to open a hedge fund here in England and uh, decided to move back, uh, which I did uh, 18 months ago. Oh, wow. So, so tell us some more about your journey in Chicago. How, how did you end up starting the company there as opposed to uh, just staying here in the UK? That's a good question, actually. Um, when Tom sold us the company, he said to me, now, Gavin, if you want to make money, you've got to go where the money is. So, so I said, right. And he said, now, when I went to make my money, I didn't make it in England. I, I went to Beverly Hills, California, because I figured that's where the money was. And, and he was right. And he said he, he stumbled across, that's how it is, words, uh, trading syndicate. And um, I'll tell the story of Tom later. But, but when I went to Chicago, I was only going for three months. And it was the other directors of the company had asked me to go and start the business out there 
find somebody locally who could run it, and uh, and then because we had a lot of American uh, users at the time, and then move back to England. Well, of course, all great plans. You go out there. Within two months, I've met Laura, who's now my wife of, of ten years. It's our ten-year anniversary this year. And um, after three months, um, I decided this is the place where I've got to be to, to set the company up. And um, I sold my house in England, moved, literally got rid of my businesses in England, and moved everything to Chicago. And I married Lord, Laura uh, a year later, and have been very happily married and uh, made a good decision, I think, because Chicago taught me a great deal about the financial markets and how they truly work. And when you combine it with the knowledge of Tom Williams and the knowledge of Wyckoff all those years ago, suddenly you get a clear picture of if you want to be a trader in these markets, you've got to think outside the box. You, you, you can't be a member of the herd, as, as Tom calls it. You've got to be contrarian. Um, so, yeah, my, my journey in Chicago took me into um, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. I did many webinars and educational events with the exchange. I went onto the exchange floor to see how the, the floor operated and uh, got a really good feel for the market. And, and that's when I decided that my future career lay very much in, in the trading and financial industry. And uh, I love it. It's a great, great way to, to make a living. And I love the fact that I'm able to educate and teach people as well. Uh, Gavin, you've had some really interesting twists of fate. It's like these small, inconsequential events where, you know, how you got into trading, how you met your wife, and then it just led to these massive life-changing things. Yeah, well, it, 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 I, I, I can't explain it, but I have to say, it, a, a lot of these things happen when you, um, when you plan them. I mean, I yeah. didn't plan to become a trader, but I yeah. certainly planned that I wanted to become a fund manager, and I have a written trading plan that I stick to every day. But in that plan, it's got some targets and goals that, that I try to achieve for myself. And I find that, that, that sometimes fate takes over and you just... You've got no control over that. But there are a lot of things you do have control over. And, uh, you know, in the financial markets, um, what I found when I wrote my book yeah. was that, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand how the markets really work. And they're all based on very simple logic, actually. It's supply and demand that is moving the price, nothing else. It's the imbalances of the supply and demand. And when supply and demand starts to come into equilibrium, which occasionally happens, it happened today in the pound, you get an explosive move. And... When I began to study it, there are two sides to, to, to market trading. There's the actual charting and the analysis, and there's the human psychology side, the human element to the trading. And that's what fascinated me when I met Tom. And uh, as I'll explain, he, he taught me that um, not as all as it seems sometimes in the markets, and sometimes you've got to, uh, think, I call it thinking outside the box, but a better word would be you've got to be contrarian which is a former police officer, I never really was, and I've had to readjust my thinking to, um, to, to become a good trader. Uh, absolutely. So and this, I think this gives us a nice segue into talking about your methodology and uh, overall what you look for. So let's try and layer this on. What, what's the kind of foundation behind what you do? You mentioned supply and demand. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's the big base that everything that you, in terms of your method and what you look for and what you think about, uh, that's the base that it's all built upon. But what's the next layer up from that? What are you ascertaining from that supply and demand information? Well, there are three universal laws, I'll call them, that, that drive the, the market, all of them. It doesn't matter if I'm, I could be talking about commodities, stocks, futures, forex, doesn't matter. You mentioned supply and demand. We hear about that all the time, don't we? We heard about it in oil. All the time they say, suddenly in 2008, oil was going to the moon. Well, we haven't got enough oil in the world. There's um, you know, a lack of supply. Okay. So the price goes up. Then suddenly, here we are, as we're doing this interview, and oil's going through the floor because there's too much of it. So, so suddenly you've got this supply and demand, but that's only a portion of what we're looking for. It doesn't give you the full picture. So there are two other laws that you can chart, and I can show you this later, and that's cause and effect. And the most important one is effort versus result. And that is such a key part of trading and charting, is looking for the supply and demand imbalance and then look at the effort versus result in the price action. That will determine whether the smart money, as I call them, are buying, selling, or are not actively participating in the market at that time. But there's another side to the market that I wrote about in my book, which is called market manipulation. That's where prices are manipulated by very large institutions. And of course, if I'd have done this interview with you, with you in 2010, 2011, you'd have probably said, what a load of rubbish, cabin markets aren't manipulated. But here we are in 2015 with the LIBOR story and the, the, the next big story is going to be gold market manipulation. But why is that relevant to what we're teaching? It's relevant 
because when a market is being manipulated, volume, which is what we analyze, becomes massive. And I'm going to show you later, Amar, why ultra-high volume bars are a great big telegram from the professional side of the market that they're doing something. And then the retail trader, if they know what to look for, which is what we'll teach them, can then participate in the movement of the market. But you're going to be surprised when I tell you that weakness, when it appears, happens as the market's going up. And strength, when it appears, happens as the market's going down. And most traders, especially the retail traders, use a stochastic or a moving average of price, which will give them buy signals right at the turning points when the markets are going to fall. And I'm going to show you today why, if you can read volume, you, you can avoid that. Interesting, interesting. So the efforts, um, effort and results side of things, what, what are we focusing on there? What are we looking for? Is that the, the surges in volume that you're talking about, or is that something else? Well, can you see my chart? That I've I got can see the chart, yeah. Okay, this is a chart of the British pound versus the US dollar. I'm using the VSA plugin for MT4, and I've, this is a live account, actually, that, that I've got here. And what I want to show you is the effort versus result. Okay, now you can see at the bottom of your screen volume, okay, which is what I'm showing here, volume. You can see low volume, and you can see these two bars here, massive volume. That's a, a one hour chart of the pound. Now here we can see as the market goes up on this massive high volume, I want you to look at what happens to the range of the bar. It's a very wide range. Mm -hmm. So when we refer to volume spread analysis, we're not talking about the bid ask spread at all. We're actually talking about the range of the price bar. That's the high and the low of the price bar. Now, the next most important part of the analysis is not where the price opened. We're not even interested in that when we look at VSA. We're interested in where it closed, especially when the next bar confirms the weakness. Now, if we look at this effort versus result, the effort is in the volume. Now, I know a lot of traders look at Forex volume and say, well, there is no volume. But I'm showing you a live, this is running live, a Forex chart with what's called tick volume. And tick volume works in exactly the same way as exchange traded volume, which surprises many, but it does. Because it's activity. That's what we're looking at. It's activity. And what you can see here, am I, is that you've got massive activity as the market's rallying. Now, this is where lots of traders start to get long on these bars because they think the market's going higher. We've got a signal which tells us up here, actually, the market has got supply coming in. What does that mean? Well, let's read the, the description. Because this is not a black box. It's not a buy-sell signal system. It will be shortly. We're developing stuff. But at the moment, it does require the trader to use their skills to identify trading opportunities. And I'll show you how, how that works shortly. But what we see here, it says this is an up bar. Okay, what do we mean by an up bar? It's a price bar that's closed higher than the close of the previous bar. That's what we mean by an up bar. Okay? So you with it so far? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And it's closed off its high, showing an increase in volume, suggesting supply has entered the market. Right? Well, that basically means sellers are overcoming buyers at that price. Okay? That's what it means. Often these bars appear as an up thrust. The bar is marked up but falls off rapidly to close on or near its low, which it does, with an average to wide price spread. Spread is the high and the low of the price bar. And you can see this is a very wide spread bar closing on the low. And most importantly, as you're going to see in a minute, that next bar closing lower has to tell the trader who's steeped in VSA, volume spread analysis, that here supply is overcoming demand that we will see falling prices and we have and you have to because that's how the market works now if we read up it says the up thrust is a money-making maneuver by the market makers to catch stops of those who are short and trap the unwary into buying prices are marked up at the open often on good news and the professionals use this to sell the bar resembles a telegraph pole background are you currently in an uptrend or a downtrend have you seen other signs of weakness prior to this indicator be very careful here. True up thrusts appear when you have weakness in the background. Now, this is important. We do have some weakness in the background here. This signal, however, is what we call confirmed. And what we do is that's the scanner that I'm going to talk about in a second. And over here, we can see that this indicator 
tells us it's not confirmed, which means you can't get ready to go short because it's not confirmed. And confirmation comes on the next bar. But this signal, which is today in the pound, was in fact the market. This was deliberately done. The market was marked up at the open very rapidly in London. And then immediately the sellers began to pour in. We have a confirmed principle, sign of weakness 48, followed by two other principles of VSA, which I'll explain later. Weakness has appeared because it's an up bar again. But look, this time the volume's still high. We close in the middle, the next bar closes lower, confirming what you're seeing here. And then four hours ago, I issued a trade alert in our live trading room. We have a live trading area where I issue alerts, and this was confirmation. It's called no demand. Look at the volume, much lower. And we can see on this bar that there's confirmation because the next bar closes lower and the price fell. Now, on the left, you're going to see a scanner. And what this is doing, Amar, is it's measuring the different time frames, starting with a daily chart, a four hour chart, a one hour chart, a 15 minute and a five minute chart. And it's then determining the trend by colors. And this is proprietary to, to the trade guide company. And if it's red, it's trending down. If it's green, it's trending up. And your optimal trades for scalping, if you want to scalp, is to look at the five minute chart, the 15 minute chart. And indeed, as I'll show you, this even works on a one minute time frame. Here today on the one minute chart, you can see where we had the falling uh, prices here. There's the supply present. And then we have the big collapse in the pound. We come over here. More weakness has appeared on the one minute chart. And now we've got some strength appearing and the market's going up because they're supporting it down here. So everything Amar, is based on the premise that volume is activity. And if you see very unusually high volume, it means the big institutional money, the smart money as I call them, are becoming active and it's time for you to look for a trade and then most importantly I'm a trend trader in different time frames so if I'm going to scalp the market which means I'm going to be in and out fairly quickly I'm going to use a one minute a five minute a 15 minute chart if I'm looking to invest in a stock for instance because this work with stocks I'll use an hourly four hourly daily and weekly chart and again it's all about aligning trends with unusual volume activity and if you can do that you can trade in harmony with the smart money, which is what I wrote the book about. Very interesting. Can we go back to that hourly chart for a second? Certainly. The one you had up a, a moment ago. Mm -hmm. How would you... See, see, this is like a characteristically very emotional chart in terms of what it's showing about exhaustion and what you're seeing in the market versus overall. Can you describe how you... Do you factor... You know, is that what volume spread analysis is describing? Obviously, it's giving an indication of what's happening with volume and this type of thing. But because you're seeing this major high and then suddenly at the close, it's pulling that back away from the high. Are we seeing like a, a kind of short-term capitulation type of thing, exhaustion in the marketplace? You know, is this, you know, the suckers, their, their stops being taken out? How would you describe the kind of overall emotions in the chart right now? Well, it's very clear. Basically, this is a stop going maneuver for anyone that's short. It gets rid of them. Yeah. But for me, it's a trigger to find a trade setup. Now, we have a system that scans the market for this type of activity, right. which, which you saw here. Now, what that's doing is you can see the numbers of the signals are, are on each of the, the bars, okay? Because yeah. each signal has a number. There's over 300 indicators. I don't like to use the word buy sell signal because it's not, it's an indicator that's measuring the imbalance of supply and demand. But what's interesting, if we look at the daily chart yesterday, okay, you can see it's got an indicator number, all right, 148. And you can see that the daily chart has been in a downtrend for nearly, what, a week and a half? So what's that telling me? It's telling me the big trend is going down. That's because I use the daily as my main guide. Now, the four hour chart overnight was going down and did give some good trades, but then it changed as they marked it up. So now we've got some congestion on the hourly chart, and we know that because the boxes turn grey when the market's in congestion or a congested period. You can see it here and here and here. However, the best trade of the day came when the five minute chart and the 15 minute chart all aligned, as you can see as they're doing. Yeah. And then we see 198, number 29, signs of weakness appearing. So let's go and look first of all at the daily chart. And you can see here, yesterday, there is an indicator which I suspect today is going to be confirmed. That's a daily chart. It told me yesterday the market's been marked up. Most importantly, though, it's in a downtrend. You can see we're trending down. We're making lower lows. 
So I know that the pound here, this, this maneuver yesterday, is designed to wipe everyone out. And it's done on budget day. This is quite deliberate. There are a lot of shorts that got killed on that bar. But I look for that signal to say, ah, there's a shorting opportunity coming tomorrow. So now you go to a different time frame. You say the hourly chart, well, you've already seen the weakness appearing, and you can see the market responding to it right now. That's a live chart. Yeah. And then you look at the 15-minute chart, you can see the same thing. Okay, no demand, weakness appearing over here, more weakness appearing, more weakness appearing, and look at what the market's doing. It has to fall because it's been marked up. And, and the market's exactly the same as running a shop. If, if you were to run a, 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 a shop, you would go to your um, uh, to whatever your supplier is, let's say it's a supplier of fruit, and you'd buy an orange for, say, 50 pence. When you put it in the shop, okay, you would have to, and this is telling us there, supply coming in, when you go to a shop, you go and say, okay, that orange the shopkeeper bought for 50 pence, but he can't sell it for 40 pence and make a profit. So he has to mark it up. So he does. He said, I'm going to sell it for a pound, or whatever he thinks he can get for it. That's exactly the way the markets work. They've, they've always worked that way. But, but, but people get very confused with, with the market because they're often trying to fit a mathematical formula to it to find a buy and sell signal. Well, actually, the markets don't work by mathematical formulas at all. They move on supply and demand. It's, it's, it's quite simple. So the emotion you're seeing in this chart is very simple. With the, the institutional, well, I call them the smart money because that's what my book's about, have marked the price up. It's closed in the middle. Yeah. The next bars close lower. Over here, we've got more weakness, and the market falls. And remember, if the market tries to rally into this area, look at the volume declining as it rallies. That's what we call weak market, and it's where I took my short trade. And what I will send you, Amar, is a copy of the video of the trade alert that I did before any of this happened. So you can see the alert that's date stamped and time stamped. And look at that. That might be something you might want to include in on the, um, um, on the recording. But, but most importantly, I'm looking at the trend. And here... It's red. The medium-term trending system is red. The short-term trending system is red. But there's something a little bit more fascinating that I'd like to show your audience, and it's this little black box right there. That's a new thing that's just been developed, and it's quite incredible. What it's showing me is that when that appears in the volume thermometer at the, at the bottom, which is measuring bullish versus bearish volume, it's telling me that it's about to be a massive move in the market because the supply and demand equilibrium is meeting. Market doesn't like that. And in any time frame, it doesn't matter if it's in a 15-minute, a daily, a one-minute chart, when I see that, you know a big move's coming. And sure enough, today, we can see in the pound exactly what that move is, massive move. And we've just actually seen a confirmed indicator coming in on this five-minute chart just here, look, the upthrust. And that's why the market's actually falling uh, as we're speaking. Very interesting stuff. So overall, it, it sounds like you're looking for the overall flow of the market, the trend, as it were. Mm -hmm. and you're looking for opportunities where there's some level of manipulation that's coming into the marketplace going against the trend for an opportunity to jump in with the trend. Is that the overall kind of higher level idea? Yeah. Yeah, you've summed it up perfectly. That's exactly right. That's okay. exactly right. It's nothing complicated. We're looking yeah. for unusually unusual volume activity. I mean, volume is activity. That's all. I don't, I don't need to get into where the volume comes from. I mean, you know, I can show you a chart of exchange traded volume in this same contract, and uh, it would be doing the same thing. The pound would be doing the same thing. It doesn't matter. Volume is activity. And tick volume, I happen to be trading, or in this instance, a Forex chart is what I'm showing you. But this could be stocks. It could be futures, which I trade. I'm a big futures trader. It could be commodities. It could be anything you want. So this extreme volume that you're looking for, uh, the key is it's not sustainable, and because it's not sustainable, it provides a great opportunity to go with the overall flow. That's, Correct. That's, I mean, if you look, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, the scanner, yeah. this, what this has now done, um, and this is a fairly new development, is this will email, this will send an actual email to me when we actually see a principle appear. So basically, what happens is if there's an ultra high volume bar appearing in the market, this system, which is actually MT4 can identify it and send me an email, which it did this morning actually, and say, yes, there is a very unusual volume bar on that particular time frame. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to go and look at it. Now, the upthrust in a downtrend, which we can see here, is a very strong sign of weakness. I mean, that's why the market is not reacting strongly, because it's a, a, what we call a confirmed 
sign of weakness in a downtrend. Those are the sort of things that you're going to look for. Here's the scanner, and if we put the um, information box up, we yeah. can see here, mm -hmm. there you go, that was 20 minutes ago. There's the up thrust, yeah. confirmed, and you can see what the price is doing. And that's, I mean, this is why I love showing this software, because we can do it live and not in hindsight. It's all well and good me preparing PowerPoints, Absolutely. but that's not, the best, that's not the best way to show what we teach. It's better to show it live. That's really interesting. You know, in the in the last five minutes, we've hit on market manipulation a few times. It'd be really good to kind of go in and talk a lot more about that, and maybe share some examples of, of what you mean by that, um, and, and kind of news-based examples of market manipulation. That is a that's a tough that's a tough word to say. <laughs> <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> there's, there's there's multiple examples. Um, yeah. I mean, if if you go to Google. Yep. And, and, and just type in market manipulation. That's all you need to do. Just go to Google it. Go and Google it. And what you're going to find is all the latest uh, information. The big story in London at the moment is the story of Quindell, which is a big stock that um, is being investigated by the FCA. But there's multiple examples. There's, there's been examples of gold market manipulation. Um, indeed, Andrew Maguire, who, who used to work with Goldman Sachs, had, had mentioned back in 2010 that gold was being manipulated. And... You know, and, and that's that's something that's been going on for a long time. It's nothing particularly new. I mean, if you go back to the 1980s and you look at the price of silver, for instance, you're going to see that silver has never, ever been above the price of $50 a troy ounce, ever. Yeah. Now, that's impossible, but people say, people go, believe me, when I actually say that, and I say, no. And the Hunt brothers actually um, called it the market in 1981. Um, Bunker Hunt actually and, and actually admitted that they actually made a fortune cornering the silver market, but then of course they lost a lot of money when, when they let it slip. But you go and look back only a few years ago, and there was a key level reached in silver at forty nine, I think, at forty nine dollars a troy ounce. Yeah. And immediately the market collapsed the next day. Only if the market is manipulated can that actually be allowed to happen. Interesting. And how how would you take advantage of these manipulations? And uh, what is it that you're looking for? Unusually high volume. Unusual. Let me show you the silver it's chart. It's that simple. I, I, I'm trying to. I'm asking these questions, looking for a level of complexity, but it's not. It's a simple concept. It's you're yeah. looking for the volume tells you everything. It, it does. I mean, look at this live. Okay. Now this yeah. is a classic, classic VSA setup. Okay, right. using the VSA method. Number one, the diamonds in the software are what we call a short-term trending system. They're proprietary, by the way. They're proprietary to Trade Guider. We invented this, and we, you know the code for it is built into MT4, but it's not part of the MT4 package. This here, these, um, this box here, is a, is a medium-term trending system. And so if you've got a short-term trend and a medium-term trend, and you see a VSA principle appear, then there may be a scalping opportunity or a short-term trade there. If it's on a bigger time frame, as you do often see this in much bigger time frames, there's a much longer-term opportunity there for you. Now, in, in this instance, I'm using the, the, the MT4 platform, but this works exactly the same for, for, for stocks. And um, what I'll do, let me um, go to my Trade Guider chart, so just bear with me, and I'll open the Trade Guider real-time software, and we'll let the data come in. And then what I'll show you is a couple of stocks that, that well, certainly I know the one in London has had a report in the, in the news about it. Um, in fact, I, I, it's just actually be quite interesting to bring that up for you and um, this is going to be quite a big story as well coming coming out into the future which I'm sure you'll you'll pick up on the financial juice oh we'll um, certainly try to <laughs> but it's a story that's going to be, be it's in the news right now because of sure. the, the amount of people that lost money in this particular um, can you see my screen there and yes. Okay, so the, the headline here, this was a story back in, um, uh, this would have been going back all the way back into April or May, I believe, mm -hmm. and it says, uh, hedge fund manager David Serra alleges price manipulation in the shorting attack on Quindell. Now, we now know, okay, there was a shorting attack on this company, not billions of pounds off the value of the stock, over a billion pounds off the value of the stock. Now, why am I showing you that? Because when I show you the chart in a minute, you'll see the volume that comes in on when these attacks take place yeah. are absolutely enormous. And if you can spot that and be alerted to it as it's happening, there could well be a trade 
in your direction perfectly legally and ethically and honestly because all you're doing here is following what the smart money are doing. That's exactly what trading in the shadow of the smart money is all about. It's about following the direction of the smart money. Um, this is gold at the moment, which is very interesting. I, I, we talked about, you know, do you want to talk about something that's manipulated? This, this, is, this is gold, which was knocked down to 11.58, and then they supported it. You can see the high volume down here. Look at Mark, as they, as they supported the market. Yep. So that's what I mean. When I said strength appears on down bars, that's where it appears. And it's the highest volume on the chart. So we know down there today, on the, it's a three-minute chart. That's the highest volume on the chart as the market fell. But look what's happened. Most people will be going short here, and the price has gone back up. And we've got indicators that show why that actually happened. Um, but if, if, we, if we think logically about human nature, you know, if there's an opportunity to make money in something, and it could be in the stock market, of course, we know it's um, trading stocks. In the forex market, it's currency exchange. I was at a seminar in Bulgaria a few weeks ago, and um, I, did, I talked about the manipulation of the forex market. And a couple of people in the audience said, Gavin, the, market, the forex market's too big to, to, to actually be manipulated. And I said, well, that's completely not true. I said, if you go back, I'll give you an example that people will remember in England. So I think it was 1992 when George Soros um, and the Quantum Fund made a speculative attack on the British pound. Do you remember that? And my interest rate, it went up like sort of 8% with Norman Lamont. <laughs> I just brought a house as well, and I'm thinking, oh, what the hell's going on? I mean, literally, the, the UK government was undergoing a, a speculative shorting attack from yeah. George Soros. That isn't manipulating the market. No, it's op that was opportunism. But yeah. at the end of the day, there are tap times when the markets are, are completely rigged. And in fact, the LIBOR scandal, which, which has come out here in the last year, is just one example. There'll be, there'll be plenty more coming out, I'm sure, because that's the way the markets have always worked, and that's the way they always will work. I don't think it'll ever be stamped out. Um, Actually, me... and in the, in the example that you just mentioned with George Soros, what it, what it was was the Bank of England was manipulating the market, and yeah. George Soros spotted the manipulation uh, uh, and basically saw it as an inefficiency. And trade against exactly the Bank right. of England because they couldn't. There's no way that they could sustain that position. Exactly right. Yeah. Now this is crude oil, right? And we'll go back all the way to 2008 sure. when we were being told that crude oil could indeed go to two two hundred fifty dollars a barrel. Oh yeah, I remember that. Now <laughs> I remember these times. Okay. Yeah. What do you notice about the volume on this weekly chart here, Amar? On this bar that I'm highlighting right here. It's, it's one of the biggest volume peaks. Massive. It's the, it was the biggest volume peak. Okay. And what colours the signal in Trade Guider? It's red. And what does the market do? It has a massive sell-off straight after. <laughs> yeah. No demand. That's yeah. one of the signals. No demand up there, and then up the top here, get more no demand. And what and what we see on all of these uh, principles, you've got the same thing happening right now. We're coming down to retest mm -hmm. the 2008 low, and we're going to get there. And then we're going to go down to $20, very likely, in oil. No one seems to think that can be true. But we've got the last indicator that we see in the program is confirming it. And that's a weekly chart. And look at the volume on it again, Amar. Okay? That, there's always the, the highest volume yeah. on the chart in February. It's yeah. selling. It's not buying. But I saw the headlines on all the channels saying it looks like oil's found a bottom and it's going to go back up. No, it hadn't. It's it, it just more selling taking place. Absolutely, yeah. It's just just the market being brought up just for another round of selling. That's exactly what it looked like. I, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about because this is just a you know a few days ago where um, a lot of the major pundits were coming out on CNBC and Bloomberg. Yeah, we found a bottom. We found a bottom. So interesting. Mm. The chart. Uh, Tom Williams, when he was teaching me this method, said, "Gav, yeah. he said the chart doesn't lie." <laughs> He's right. It doesn't lie. I mean, what is the trend of price in oil? It's been trending down yeah. from 100 up here. Now, we've got a system that measures trends. We've got the short-term and medium-term system. Now, on a weekly chart, if you find a stock or any instrument that's trending down, you short it as it spikes up on volume. That's, but, but most people see that weekly chart and they say, ah, oh, it's gone up, I'm going to buy it. And then yeah. suddenly when it goes back down and they get their backsides handed to them on a plate, yeah. They can't figure it out. But once you understand volume spread analysis and the universal law of supply and demand, mm -hmm. cause and effect, effort versus result, then suddenly the whole chart makes it, 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 it's, it's a different story.
And yeah. suddenly you're, you're trading in harmony with the big players. I think you know I, I do a lot of like FX retail trader research, and what I've found is, generally speaking, most traders are bottom pickers, where they're looking for uh, you know a low that they can catch for a reversal because the trend is about to change. And you know what you're describing is the exact opposite of that. It's going with the overall flow of the market, and that's why you know most traders get caught up because they're they're trying to catch the bottom. They're trying to catch this new trend as it's coming in. Or they're waiting for a, you know an, uh, a moving average crossover or something that's telling them that something that a, at a new trend is crossing and just where that trade guy the arrow is pointing to the downside that's probably where they'll be entering. Actually, I can do it better myself. That's exactly right. <laughs> it, it, it is somewhat contrarian. I, yeah. I will, you know, the, the 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 method we teach, I will admit, is contrarian, and and my book is contrarian. But I make no apologies for that because if you want to make it in the market, you have to be a contrarian. You can't go with the herd, otherwise you'll lose. It's interesting stuff. What I'm kind of taken aback by is the simplicity of what you're describing, because uh, there's, there's this overall desire to kind of look for something more complex. But it's just, you know, incredibly simple principles that have a very powerful effect. I, you know, I've been doing this for 14 years now. I believe the markets are quite simple to understand, but the problem comes yeah. when you start to look um, at all the information that you're receiving. I, I have to say, your website is absolutely brilliant in relation to the way, and, and we're going to actually hopefully link your site into the, the, the Trade Guider program, because if you can see a news event that's coming, yeah. and you see the market shoot up on very high volume, yeah. you might be thinking, if you're unexperienced, I better buy now, I'm going to miss the move, whereas we're going to be saying, get ready to short. <laughs> and we, yeah. and, and you know, as as we can see, you know, yeah. we, 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 this is this is the chart, of the pound that we were just looking at, right? Now look at the price. The chart doesn't lie. No, absolutely. You're just looking for opportunities, you know, manipulation opportunities. Well, not on your side, but uh, you're looking for where the the news essentially is is the is the I don't know, I guess the delivery boy for the market yeah. manipulators. You're it's putting out their information, the information that they want to be out there, so that the market can spike and it gives them another chance to get in with the overall trend and view the market. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and that, and this, you know, this is not a PowerPoint slide we're looking at. I mean, we've we've been in this interview for, you know, 25, 30 minutes, and you could see the signal appeared. You could see the trending systems confirming the short, and down it went. And that's been doing that on the pound actually for the last few days. We've had some wonderful trades because. If we look at the scanner, they're all starting to align. Look, all of these, and you're absolutely right. The market is like a river flowing. All right, price action is the river. Now, when I go, if I go for a swim in a river, which I, try, I tend not to do now, but I used to as a kid, <laughs> yeah. I, I I jump in the river. I I want to flow with the tide. It's much easier to swim that way, yeah. unless I'm trying to get fit, in which I'm going to swim against the tide. But if you swim against the tide, you're going to get very tired very quickly, and you could end up drowning. But if you allow the flow of the river, or price in this case, to flow in your direction, which it clearly yeah. is on the five minute, it clearly is on the fifteen minute. The hourly's just changed, the daily's already there. This will change, I'm sure, in the next four hours. Then trade short and wait for the VSA principle to confirm the trade. It isn't complicated and it isn't difficult, but of course, so many people have been pre-programmed with stochastics and moving averages, and and they they suffer from analysis paralysis, is what I find. They just don't know which way to go because they get so many different types of analysis methods. That's what I find. They can suffer with analysis parameters. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, here's a question for you. Um, I can see the power of your method in a trending type of environment. What happens when the market goes sideways? How do you position yourself, and what do you look for in, in order to protect yourself? Oh, good, good question. I don't trade. Okay. <laughs> And I'll tell you, it's simple. Why, why, why would I trade in a market which is going sideways? Yeah. Where I, you know, potentially you're going to go be whipsawed out the market. So mm -hmm. I'm trading in harmony. When these are all aligning, my yeah. trade is a much higher probability trade. Right. Than I was to do a, a trade. So yeah, uh, what, what we're saying here is very clear that, that you you trade in the direction of price action. Yeah. And you 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 know and, and look, we can see already now look some strength coming in. This is a reversal. This could stop the market here at this point. So if I was in a short position, which I'm currently not, I've already closed it, but if I was, I'd be aware that there's high volume on this down bar. And if I look at this and look at this indicator, I say, ah, oh, now, do I want a stopping volume? Is the market going to hold here? Now, 
I would use now the, the thermometer to continue in the trend and say, right, well, if I see that, I'll move my stop a bit closer because I've participated in the move had I been trading that. Yeah. And then I see the, the, the strength coming in. And now what I watch for is the market to test this level and then start to rally. This, this could prove to be at least a stopping point for the market because you can't continue to have falling prices all day. Usually they'll stop it and move it back up a bit to catch some stops. And you might be seeing that live as we're filming this. Okay, so, um, going back to the sideways market, so the scanner is, is essentially giving you your cue to when you're when you should be looking for a trade, and you're looking for an alignment between the the time frame that you're trading on and the high time frames like the daily or the four hourly. Correct. And when you're not, I just want to make sure I completely understand this and for our viewers. So when you're not seeing that alignment, you you you're flat. You don't look for a position. No. Um, how, how long can a span, a span like that uh, last for? Well, it, what's it, the longest it, sideways market that you've seen where you've just kind of sat on your hands and waited? Oh, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, generally speaking, the wonderful thing about um, this particular platform is I can scan multiple markets, all right? Yeah. Now, I'm scanning all of these at the moment, right? Now, you can yeah. see, and this is just the currency pairs. I've also, in the background, got uh, the gold, the silver, the palladium, the whole lot. Now, if you can't find a setup in one market, you wait and you go to the next one. Now, that's the most difficult thing about trading is finding the setup. But with the scanner working in the background over here, what it does is it's linked into my email account. So when these all start to align and a principal appears, it sends me an email. That's how I go and find my trade. I, I, have, I can tell you for a fact, I trade every day usually because there's a trade somewhere. Like today, it was the British pound. But, you know, there is always going to be a situation in one of the markets where they're all aligning, there's always going to be that. And in fact, it's happening on the pound right now. Very interesting. Very So we've talked about the methodology. We've talked about what you look for. Um, now the big question is, how are you managing your risk? How are you managing that trade? Okay. Well, there's several ways we can do that. Let's talk, I mean, let's talk about trading styles for a second because there are scalpers, there are investment traders, there are fund managers who are taking much longer term positions. I have a very simple rule, which I follow, and, it, it, and risk management is one of the most important parts of trading, is I never put more than 2.5% of my capital in any one position. So if I, I can trade more than one position, but my risk is always 2.5% maximum, and I never break that rule. Okay, so, that, so that means if I wanted to take a trade here, and I, wanted, I was trading a £50,000 account, I know that I need to put my stop at a certain place. Now, the software has a mechanism that will show you where a stop should be based on certain parameters that were programmed by Tom Williams. If I highlight the bar here and put H stops, which are here, and this is just a guide. This is not exactly where the stop should go. It's just a good guide. Yeah. You can see this blue line, okay, which is where the stop is. Now, you can see if you've been short in this contract, right, from up here, the blue line is moving down as the market's moving down, right. all right? And even here, even though we had a sign of strength, the stop is still up there, so you'd still actually potentially be, be in the trade because it's a sign of weakness. So over here, there's, there's your weakness. There's a signal just there, okay? okay? Okay. And over here, the market's fallen down because of that. The test that we had here, the green signal has failed, and this stopping volume is not holding the market up at the moment. It's only a five-minute chart because it's still weak because of that big bar I showed you on the, on the hourly chart. If we look at the hourly chart, yeah. What's going on in the background? That's the, min that's the one minute chart, by the way. Um, that was no demand there. But on the um, one hour chart, the reason this market is falling is still because of this here. That hasn't, I always say this, this hasn't disappeared. Now, from a risk point of view, it depends which account I trade, because I trade a public account, uh, which is $5,000 in our, our live trading room, and we've always kept it to a small amount to show people how you can manage risk. But clearly, when you're trading a hedge fund and you're trading millions of pounds, you still apply the same risk management as you do to a small account, which is ironic. And that's what we do. We don't try to, you know, if we see an opportunity in gold or silver or whatever, even the pound as it is here, 2.5% yeah. of the capital, we never exceed it. Never. And we never have done. Right? But because if you do and you're wrong and you blow out 30 to 40% of the account, you can't live to fight another day. But if you lost 2.5% of your capital, you could wait for the next trade setup. And we know not every single trade setup is going to work all the time, but we try to get the best probability ones, and that's what we're programming in um, at the moment. 
Very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. How, how are you taking your profit? So we've, we've got the risk management in place. You've got the system telling you where to move its stop, and essentially you're following the trend and you trade along. What parameters are you using to take profit? None. So you you let the trade flow, and then when it comes back, a, it a, stop and gets taken out. Is that kind of yeah, right? Exactly right. I use a trading stop. I use the yeah, software exactly. to tell me where to put the stop. I right. don't set I don't set profit targets because the market can go a lot through that target and go much further. And as Tom Williams taught yeah. me, a trend will go on a lot longer than you think it will. So yeah. the, the golden rule I know most fund managers will tell you is let a good trade run. Exactly. My rule is this: my first priority in a trade is to get to break even. The first priority. That's all I think about. Right? When I'm in the trade, the first thing I'm going to do is get to break even. Now, if, as in this situation that we're seeing now, the market starts to run in my favour, and you say I'm short as it's going in our favour because of the weakness in the background, then I'm going to start to lock in profit using the trading stop. Now, at some point, we go from break even to profit and then to profit. Now, at some point, I'm going to determine I'm very happy with that profit, and I'm going to leave the stop there. I'm not going to move it, and I just leave it there. And sometimes, you know, I'll leave it overnight and I'll wake up the next morning and the market's moved another 300 to 400 pips. Sometimes it's come up and stopped me out, but I've still made a profit. But the key strategy for me that's in my trading plan is as soon as you've got a decent move in the market like we're seeing today, yeah. number one, you make sure you get your stop to break even after you've entered. And number two, once you've got it to a profitable position, you can either trail it, which the software will, sh will, uh, will show you where you should put it, as you can see here, mm -hmm. which will lock in profit all the way down. You can set in MT4 and other platforms an automatic trading stop. But I don't bother with that. Once I've got to a profitable position and I'm comfortable with it, I let the thing run as much as I can. On the other hand, if the market goes against me and I don't like what I'm seeing, I'll close it out fairly quickly. I don't like the market going against me. I don't feel comfortable with it, so I close it as soon as I can. Because I know there's going to be another trade coming up. You know, so I don't, I don't hang on to lose it and just hope they're going to turn. That's not a good strategy. If it's not working, you're not comfortable, get out. When you make a great trade and you're winning, get the stop to break even, get into profit as quickly as you can, and if it's moving like it is today, there's some very good opportunities. Again, in the video that I did earlier, you'll see where it all started on, on the pound today. It really all started on that black box, yeah. which was telling us, you can see here, that we had some signs of weakness, and that is a very, very clear thing. It's telling us the market is finding supply and demand equilibrium, and the market doesn't like that. It's gonna, it's gonna blow off. It's gonna, gonna take off. And then you say, well, which direction? I don't know. Well, yes, you do. If you use volume, and you look at the hourly chart, you know which direction it's gonna go because they've marked it up. Very logical, as you said. It's not difficult to figure that out. It, but once you, once you get your head around this, and you will, and people will, because we've got thousands of customers who've got it, then you've got that knowledge with you for the rest of your life, and it's a, it's a wonderful piece of knowledge to have because you'll be doing the opposite of what the herd do. And that will that will make you successful as a trader. Okay. Uh, just want to summarize what I, the overall strategy and from, from what I've gleaned and understood. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. So essentially, you're looking for trades that go with the overall trend. You're looking for high volume market manipulation type information that is going against the trend, and you're looking for an opportunity to go to go with the trend on the back of that. Correct. And once once you put that opportunity into your trade. You're essentially letting that winner run, cutting, you know, cutting those losses short as much as you can. So if you've got a winning opportunity, you're trading it, you're letting it go, you're letting it flow as much as, much as the market can possibly bear, and then you've got that mechanical stop um, that is essentially helping you manage it, keeping you systematic in the way that you're doing it. Doing Perfect. That. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we manage to teach you that in 55 <laughs> minutes, Amar, you've summarized it perfectly. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, we haven't spoken in a great deal of detail about our method, so it's sure. good because you're, you're looking at this pretty much for the first time in any real detail. So if you've summarized what, what, what I've just discussed and you've summarized it perfectly, then it's been a very good interview as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it just sounds very simple, very logical, and, and, and I can see the power of it. It's, uh, it's an interesting approach and a very simple approach to, to the marketplace where you know, I, I think a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of people out there tend to kind of make this type of thing complicated. You can easily glean the principles of what you're trying to do, and that's the most powerful aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it is it is simple. It, it, you don't need to make trading complicated. You make it complicated, you'll get analysis paralysis. You won't know what you're doing, and often you'll just that's gamble true. with the market. You'll be you'll, you'll be a gambler. You won't be a professional trader. I, I think you know 
words of advice to, to your to your audience is number one, when you're looking at something new, I mean the good thing about um, VSA volume spread analysis, there's a yeah. lot of information on the internet and on our websites that you, that you can go to and look at. Secondly, um, once you understand how the market works, as I've said, you'll have that knowledge with you for the rest of your life. And, and the markets will have always been moved this way. And it's definitely worth um, studying the work of Tom Williams and, and, and volume spread analysis. He's written a book called Master the Markets. And, and you know, my book, Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money, is, is based on that, really. I just try to simplify it and, and bring it into a modern age. But, uh, you know, it, it's contrarian, um, Amar. And I think that once people decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of the herd, and I'm going to be a professional trader and trade in harmony with the smart money, they'll find it the most rewarding experience of their lives, because it certainly has been for me. Absolutely, yeah. It's, 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 it um, the, the, we're going to get close to wrapping the interview up, and you've just kind of given me a perfect segue. Uh, a question I want to ask you is, who's been the biggest influence on, the, on your trading? And you, you kind of mentioned Tom, you know, uh, quite the interview. Um, can you tell us a little more uh, about Tom and his background, and uh, you know, we know how you met and this type of thing, but a little more about Tom, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, okay, um, to answer your question, of course you are right, the biggest by far uh, influence on my life, and certainly on my trading has been Tom Williams, um, and as I said, his background was, uh, he was a state registered nurse. Uh, originally, that's how he said. So I started my, my life as a policeman, and he started his career as a state registered nurse. And he was sent to Beverly Hills. Well, he went to Beverly Hills, California, and registered there. And one of his first patients was uh, a gentleman called Ike West, who um, was managing a massive, massive hedge fund, but actually had a, um, a drugs habit. And basically, what Ike happened with with, with um, Tom was he was assigned to Ike West to look after him, probably a medical minder would be quite a good word for it, and um, Ike was managing this massive fund, and it was a fund that was very private, it wasn't publicly available, but it was available to the Hollywood stars, um, I believe Kirk Douglas and some of the other stars would um, would go and drop their money into the fund to, tr to be traded in the stock market, and that particular um, fund Tom became a member of, and it was it's what they call a syndicate, that's what they used to call them in those days, a syndicate. And what they would do is Tom would, um, uh, because obviously he was looking after Ike, they, they taught him the Wyckoff method, which is still taught today in San Francisco at the Golden Gate University. And that method is what everything you're seeing here is based on because Tom computerized it. But he, he began to draw the charts for the syndicates because they used to use charts to make their decisions because they're looking, just like we're looking today, at unusual volume activity. And lo and behold, he began to learn this method, and at 40, he retired a multimillionaire. He made his money with the fund. He moved back from Beverly Hills, and he decided, because he didn't know what to do, could I computerize the Wyckoff method? Could I computerize the knowledge that I've been taught in the set in the syndicate? And in those days, we're talking all oh, 20, 25 years ago, the IBM computer, the desktop, was just coming out, and he actually found a programmer in England who started to develop this, and it's evolved from that. And, and uh, Tom is uh, 86 now. Um, he lives in Worthing, as you, I think you know, in the south of England. And he still trades. Um, you know, he, he can't see. Unfortunately, he's losing his sight. So I have to be with him when he's actually trading. But he can still recognize these principles as, as though he was you know, 25 years old. Because, as he said, they will never change. The markets won't change. They'll always be moved on the principles of supply and demand. And that's what volume spread analysis measures. And uh, as I say, Tom has been widely recognized around the world now as the leading expert in not only the Wyckoff method, but VSA, and is changing traders' lives for the better. And I think, you know, if there's one thing you want to know at the end of your life, you say, hey, I've managed to achieve my goal. And Tom's goal was right. to help the uninformed to understand the financial markets. And I believe he's achieved that, especially with the new development of this software. Um, I'm very proud of it and proud of him. And, proud of what we teach and I think we're telling people the truth and if they go and check it, which I always say, go and verify everything that we're in the, in the markets, go and verify what we're saying, you'll find that the markets do indeed move on unusually high volume spikes and supply and demand. Okay, well, right. Tom sounds like an amazing guy. I think we'll have him on for an interview sometime soon. You might, we, must do that. we must do that. That's the next logical step, Amar, definitely. Okay, excellent. Gavin, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, and I, I, I've learned a few things myself, which has been really good. 
Um, so guys, Gavin, uh, Gavin Holmes from freeguider.com. You can find Gavin's content also on financial news and the new settings in the uh, in the education section. I believe his YouTube videos are available there. Um, and Gavin, thank you so much for coming on, and we're looking forward to having another event in the next time again. Great, thanks, Amar. Thanks to Financial Juice, great uh, service, and uh, I look forward to promoting it more as well. Thanks very much indeed, Amar. Excellent, cheers.